The people of Bat Ain live in enmity with their Palestinian neighbors who don't dare come near. While other settlements are fenced in, the people here prefer a different approach, deterrence. The Arab knows that when a Jew fences himself in, the rest of the land is his. We want to prevent that. He puts his plow next to the Jew's fence and starts plowing all the way to his village. And that's unacceptable. If I don't have a fence, it confuses him. Our fence, in fact, goes as far as an M16 can reach. The range of an M16 bullet is our fence. If they shot a few rounds at you, you go to their village and shoot a few more. These were simple reactions. If they damaged an orchard, you damaged ten. Two eyes for an eye, teeth for a tooth. And then there was an escalation to where I crossed all the red lines. From a desire to scare the Arabs off, you get to attempted murder. All the way. Big time. In Bat Ain, a plan began to take shape in the spring of 2002, which would come to shock the entire nation. It was my idea. It started as my idea. I supplied the explosives. I'm an explosives expert. Someone got a trailer from somewhere. The wagon belonged to the Jewish settlement in Hebron. It contained 200 liters of gasoline. Something like that. This is the trailer. A propane tank, a barrel. A propane tank and a barrel. An explosive charge attached to the propane tank. Another charge was attached to this barrel. And the fuses come out to a clock that was placed here, attached to the barrel. We set the clock for 7.30 a.m. This was the intended target, an Arab girls' school in East Jerusalem. The huge bomb was meant to go off at the entrance at the busiest time of the morning, as the children were arriving at school. This street is usually full of people, a place which is next to a school, between a school and a hospital. Whoever gets hurt 